Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today we're talking about a brand new distribution plot in Seaborn. It's called the ECDF plot. So for starters, what is the ECDF plot? Well, it's a distribution plot, and like the disk plot and the hist plot, the ECDF plot was released in Seaborn version 0.11. Its name looks like a rearrangement of the alphabet, but it actually stands for Empirical Cumulative Distribution Function. So you'll be able to use it to look at the distribution of your data. To make an ECDF plot, let's say that we have 10 observational values like these. Our first step is to sort these values so that we have the smallest value first and the largest value last. Now we're going to plot two's axes on the bottom or X axis, we're going to put these values. And on the y-axis, we'll put the proportion of values that we've seen so far. Okay, so how do we plot these data? First, since 1 is the minimum value of these data, our ECDF plot starts from there. This observation of 1 represents a certain proportion of our data. In fact, in this case, it represents 10% of our data. So we'll draw a vertical line up to 0.1 on the y-axis. So, so far we've looked at one, this very first value. Now we're gonna imagine taking that bar and sliding down our values list until we get to the next value, which is at 1.5. So we didn't encounter any other values until we get to 1.5. So on our plot, we'll just extend our line over to the right until we get to 1.5. Now, since we do have a value at 1.5, once again, this represents 10% of our data. So we'll draw a vertical line straight up. Now, since we've sorted these data, so far we've encountered 20% of these data. So on the y-axis, we're currently at 0.2. And we're going to continue to do this. But the next time that we slide the bar, we actually come across two values at the number two. So our plot again goes to the right over to 2, but now because we have two observations at 2, we'll actually extend this vertical line upward to 0.4 because we've seen 40% of the data so far. And that's how the ECDF plot works. We'll just continue extending our line until we've reached all of the data. Finally, when we get to our maximum value of 5, that will represent 100% of the data. So our proportion is now at one on the y-axis. So what are the advantages of the ECDF plot? Well, unlike a histogram or KDE plot, there's no binning or smoothing here. We can actually see how each observation is affecting that cumulative distribution. Also, because we're just plotting lines here, it's often a lot easier to compare different distributions across categories. On the negative side of things, now we are no longer able to see the central tendencies of these distributions as easily. For example, the mean or the variance are a little bit harder to detect here. It's also a little bit harder to detect when we have a bimodal distribution. But given all of that, let's go ahead and take a look at the ECDF plot and the Seaborn Python code. To get started, I'm going to load in the Seaborn library as well as the PyPlot module from the matplotlib library. And by the way, all of the code I'm about to show you is available on my GitHub page. Next, I'm going to load in a data set from the Seaborn library, and this data set is called tips. It's about the tip amount that various different people left their server. And so we also have other characteristics here, like the day and the time that the tip was left. If I take a look at the shape of this, I have 244 observations and seven different columns. I'm going to go ahead and set my styling to be dark grid, and now we're ready to create our ECDF plot. To do that, I'll call up the Seaborn library and the ECDF plot. Then I just need to pass in here what will be my x value. So this data set has a column called tip with the actual tip amount that each of these patrons left. And I'm also referencing my data that's coming from the tips data frame. Okay, once we hit enter, we see our ECDF plot. So you can see along the x-axis, we have the various different tip amounts, and along the y-axis, we have the proportion of the amount of data we've seen so far. Okay, so a couple things to notice here. You'll see that the chart begins at a value of 1, and it ends at a value of 10. So that's coming from the minimum and maximum values for these tip amounts. 
So if we reference that tips data frame in the tip column, and I take the minimum, I'm going to see a value of $1. Likewise, if I take the tips data frame, the tip column, and check the max, that will be $10. So your ECDF plot is going to range throughout the min and the max of whatever data you're plotting. You'll also see that there are certain areas where we basically have a vertical line, like this one at 2. So that's coming from the fact that we have a lot of values that are exactly $2. So if I take a look at my tips data frame, the tip column, and I do value counts, I'm also just going to take a look at the top part of that, so I'll do head as well. The very top amount, the most common value that people left was $2, and then $3 and $4, right? So if we go back up and look at the plot, we'll see that there are a lot of values happening at $2. In fact, $2 represents over 13% of our entire data set. So you're seeing that proportion jump quite a bit when we get to those values. So that's something else that you can keep a lookout for in the ECDF plot are these large vertical jumps. That just means that there are lots of observations at that particular value. The other cool thing about this plot is that you can use it to see what percentage of data are below or above a certain value. So for this I'm going to use the PyPlot module and I'm going to add in a vertical line. So let's say that we added in a vertical line at a value of $4, and I'm also going to make that line black. From the ECDF plot, this is telling me that by the time I get to $4, I've seen 80% of the data so far. So 80% of the tips left in this data set were $4 or less. Likewise, I can see that 20% of the remaining tips are greater than $4. So that's how you can interpret the various x values along with the proportions that are listed on the y. You're seeing a cumulative proportion of the amount of values that you've seen so far. So, so far we've had the tip amount on the x-axis, but this plot also allows you to put that on the y-axis instead. You'll just switch your argument to y. Now you'll see that we have the proportion along the x-axis, but the tip amount along the y-axis. So this is really just a reorientation of our data. So now if I put a vertical line on this plot, let's say I put it at 0.5, again I'll change that color to black, this is showing me where the 50th percentile is in these data. In fact, if I take the tips data frame, check out the tip column, and look at the median, you'll see that that's $2.90. So when my proportion is 50%, or the median of this data set, that value is $2.90 as shown by the y-axis. You have several additional options when working with the ECDF plot. For example, you can use hue to split out different categories. So let's take a look at those options in the Seaborn code. Like many other Seaborn plots, you can use hue to show off categorical variables within your ECDF plot. So to do that, you'll just reference the hue argument, and now you'll pass in whatever the column name is that you'd like to split up on. So for us, let's split up based on time. There are two different times in this data set, either lunch or dinner. So here we're seeing an ECDF plot for both of those separately. In the blue line, we see that there are lots of people who leave $2 tips during the lunch hour. And in the orange line, we see that there are a lot of $3 dinner tips. So this is really nice because you can compare the distributions of these two different categories within your data set. Overall, dinner tips tend to be a little bit larger than lunch tips. But using hue within the ECDF plot really becomes beneficial when you have several different categories. So now let's split up the hue based on the day. Here we have four different categories for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all of the days that are contained within our data set. But we're able to now compare the distribution across those days even though they're kind of right on top of each other, we're still able to see nice deviations among these data. For example, this long green tail is telling me right away that Saturday is the day when my server gets the largest tips. Now, one other thing to note here, we are looking at proportion. So if I happen to have one category that's a whole lot smaller than the others, I'll still be scaling all of those values so that each of these different categories ranges from 0 to 1 in terms of proportion. 
But in general, when you have various different groups that you want to compare and the distributions are kind of all stacked on top of each other, the ECDF plot is great for showing this relationship. Because we're just getting lines instead of a bunch of boxes and bins like we would with a histogram. Now, so far I've been showing you the proportion on the y-axis, so we're looking at what proportion of our data have we seen so far. If you'd like to look at actual raw numbers, you can switch the stat argument over to count. Now this will show you actually how many observations you've seen so far. And so if you'd like to look at raw counts, especially if you have also a hue argument, you could use both of these so that now we can see that there are just fewer observations on Fridays in orange as compared to Saturdays in green. So the count is giving you how many observations we've seen so far. For example, at $4, we've already seen 200 observations. But what if I wanted to know what the rank of a $4 tip is? For example, if I want to say that the number one best tip is $10 and then count backwards, how could I do that with this plot? Well, it turns out that there's another argument called complementary, so let's try that. This is basically just giving us a complete opposite view of what we had before. We're starting way over here with the maximum value and then we're counting backwards to our minimum value. But I think the cool thing about using both count and complementary is that we're effectively ranking these tips. For example, the number one best tip is $10. By the time we get down to $2, that's ranking about 170th down to 200th. Now, the final option I want to show you is called weights. So, so far what we've been doing is taking the tip amounts, putting those along the x-axis, and our y-axis is just showing us what percentage of those tips have we seen so far. For example, by the time we get to $4 tips, we've seen 80% of our data so far. But what we can do with weights is actually tally up how much of our money we have made so far. So let's go ahead and try to use this weights option. And we're going to set this to the tip column. You could theoretically set this to whatever column you want, but I'm actually going to weigh these based on the actual dollar amount in the tip. So now what this is telling me is how much money have I made so far? So for example, by the time I get to $4, I've actually only made about 70% of the money that I'm going to make. And so let's go ahead and put in a horizontal line here. Once I get to the 50th percentile of how much money I'm going to make, that actually occurs at right about $3.50. So by using this weights, sometimes you'll hear politicians say something like, well, 50% of the money I've made came from contributions that were less than $3.50. That's what we're doing here. We're actually saying how much money have we made by each of these different tip amounts. And you'll see that these larger amounts now are weighed more heavily since they contribute more to the actual amount of money that we're making. Like always, there's tons of ways that you can style the ECDF plot. So here's some examples to get you started. One of the first things that you might want to update in terms of styling are the colors displayed on your ECDF plot. So for this example, I have an ECDF plot and I've broken out my data based on the day of the week. But let's say that I'm not happy with this default color palette. If I'd like to switch the colors that are displayed here, that's an argument called palette. And there's over a hundred different palettes that you can choose from within Seaborn. I'm going to use one that's called summer. So I'll just pass in the string summer and that will switch over to these nice green shades. Besides these Seaborn keyword arguments, you also have access to various arguments in PyPlot. So any other arguments that you're passing in here will go through to PyPlot's plot function. So for example, you can change the line width to let's say three. But whatever arguments you know how to style lines within PyPlot will also work here. And there's even more styling you can do by capturing the return object from this ECDF plot. So what I mean by that is let's go ahead and let P equal the return object from ECDF. If I go ahead and check the type of P, we'll see that that is a matplotlib axes subplot. So that means that we can continue working with and styling this P object. For example, if I'd like to adjust the legend here, I can reference p.legend. Then I can pass in a list with all the different values I'd like to use within my legend. So let's say instead of having thur, fry, sat, and sun, I'd actually like to print out the actual day names. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Passing in that list, you'll see that now those legend names have been updated. 
I can also do things like put a title onto this legend. Let's say that that's going to be day of week and we'll see that appear. Or I could potentially do things like move my location of my legend to wherever I'd like it on my plot. So just keep that in mind that this is going to return a matplotlib object and you can continue using that to style your ECDF plot. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Seaborn ECDF plot. It's a different type of distribution plot that really shines when you want to show distributions of various different categories. If you want to check out some of Seaborn's other distribution plots, go ahead and take a look at my past videos about those. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Ooh, the sun went down. The sun went down. Come back in Seaborn version 0 0.11. I always forget what's next. Its name looks like. <laughs>